Researchers are proposing that we grow satellites while in orbit, and reuse the hybrid inorganic and organic materials to feed our astronauts. The project, Grow a Tree in Space, suggests NASA uses living cells to make individual components of a spacecraft. The team says, if we can translate cells' ability to aggregate, to create the most complex living organisms in lieu of what is traditionally made of metal, we may realize mankind's first live starship. Cells are beautiful and amazing. They have the ability to attach to each other without any preconceived structural configuration, and they self-aggregate into complex systems autonomously, David Barnhart, director of USC Space Engineering Researcher Center, told USC News. How do we make the outside of currently clunky mechanical spacecraft to something like a cell that expands and contracts seamlessly, to allow more cells to attach and grow to any size in space? Barnhart and Nicole Livia Atudo CEO of Biodura Bucharest University collaborated in producing a paper about other ways of manufacturing space platforms that could transport food into space. And they call this technology bioterran capability in space or growing the environment itself. If we can clone sheep and land humans on the moon, we should be able to solve the challenges to grow a tree in space, Barnhart said. While actually growing organic material openly in the vacuum and temperature of outer space is not currently possible, scientists could take initial steps toward that goal one of which may be to grow existing species encapsulated by a material such as aerogel in a protected layer or cocoon to withstand the extreme conditions, Barnhart said. Another alternative would be creating a completely new species of genetically modified flora and fauna that has a better chance of surviving the frigid temperatures, along with cutting-edge methods to provide oxygen and nutrients. He envisions using genetically modified Australian eucalyptus that can survive in the freezing temperature. The idea of growing these platforms in space is a way to conserve costs and Barnhart believes the organic material can be used as a food source once it is in orbit or as other platforms for satellites in the future. Not only will this minimize debris left in space from satellites, the Grow a Tree in Space proposal will also help humans learn how to grow vegetation in extreme conditions. By 2050, many experts predict a majority of the world will be plagued by droughts, heavy storms and landslides. Such research could help us understand how to grow in austere conditions, such as growing in arid or dry conditions that haven't traditionally been suitable for crops, Barnhart said. It could open up a whole new field of extreme biological technology. While a working, orbiting live starship is far off, Barnhart and Atudo CE said scientists already imitate nature for today's satellite functions. Heat pipes in large satellites use fluid to transfer thermal energy similar to the ways trees do for nutrient transport, for example. Barnhart and Atudo CE have filled their proposal with the NASA Innovation Advanced Concepts Office with the hopes of securing funding for a study that will focus on growth, nutrient transport, and materials that could build a cocoon.